Hello, my name is Martin. And, uh, Hello. This is my challenge. Hey, I'm Sarah from Flora Brewing on YouTube. I think we need to come up with a challenge between us. I'm going to challenge you to something. You challenge me to something. We'll both brew it, send each other the resulting beers, and see what we think. I love it. Let's do that. I would like you to brew a beer and not to purchase or in any way obtain a packet of yeast. How about that? Think you could do that? I do. People have actually been asking me to do something very similar with my Australian sparkling ale. So I think I already know what I'm going to do. For your challenge, I challenge you to make a sour beer, but not use lactobacillus to sour it. Huh. Now I've done a few kettle sourings using mm -hmm. lactobacillus and good bear, um, good belly for that into yeah. the kettle as well. I so mean, that's uh, technically lactobacillus in that good belly. So yes. no yogurt, no sour milk. All right, challenge accepted. <laughs> All right, I'm so excited. Okay, Sarah, I think I've got this. So I've got what I think is a good Goza base to get me started. So let's add this in. Now I'm gonna mash this a little, a little lower than I would some of my beers. I'm going for 148 Fahrenheit, that's 64 Celsius. I'm just gonna mash this for about an hour. I've got a little bit of wheat malt in here and it always just gives that sort of extra cloudy look to the to the wort right away from the from the very beginning. It looks delicious. Okay, so I'll be recirculating here for about an hour. Now, let's talk about the souring options that I've got here. Um, the Homebrew challenge, as I went through my 99 beers, I ended up exploring a number of different ways to sour beers. The first kind of cheapest, cheatest way of doing this is uh, to, well, oh, hold on. Just use some lactic acid. You can add this actually at the very end, just before tasting or even during tasting. And this will sour the beer. I mean, ultimately sour beers are beer with lactic acid in them, so that's one option. Yeah, it's a lot more soury, that's good though. But my favorite way of creating sour beers is to kettle sour using lactobacillus. And that's simply the case of adding some lacto into the kettle and keeping it warm around sort of 90 Fahrenheit for a few days while the lactobacillus goes about its business of generating the lactic acid. I've used packets of lacto that I've got from the homebrew store to do that. And I've also used a probiotic drink that contained lactobacillus as well. And those have worked pretty well. And I really like kettle souring because it keeps all of the lacto bugs in the kettle. I then boil this, which that kills them off. And I don't have to worry about any infections, which might be the case if I was putting this stuff in a fermenter. But I'm not kettle souring today. So I need to find another way. In terms of what is actually going into the mash kettle, well, I am building a beer here with an OG of around 1041. So looking at about a four and a half percent beer here, which is right around the style of what you'd expect for a Goza. In terms of ingredients, well, 50% of my malt is German wheat malt and 38% is German Pilsner. And then to that for the remaining 12%, I'm adding flaked wheat. And those ingredients should really give me a base that will be perfect to really show off the sourness of this beer. Now Goza is not by any means a bitter beer, looking at an IBU of around 10 or 11. To get that, I'm using a single packet of Hallertau Mittelfleur, and I'm gonna split this, so half of this packet here, so half an ounce, is gonna go in at the start of my boil, 
and then I'll put the other half in with five minutes to go. And also with five minutes to go, that's where I'm gonna add these other two classic Goza ingredients. I have coriander seeds, which I have crushed up, and I have a half ounce or about 14 grams of coriander seed, and then I also have the same amount of sea salt. So both of these will also go in with five minutes to go. So how am I gonna get the sourness, the lactic acid into my beer? Well, I'm gonna use this crazy thing. This is Philly Sour Dry Yeast. And during fermentation, in addition to producing ethanol or alcohol, which you'd expect from your brewing yeast, this also produces lactic acid. Fermentation should take about 10 days. It's highly attenuant and highly flocculent as well. In addition to the sourness, this will contribute some aroma and flavor of apple and stone fruit, particularly peach. And the fermentation range is from 20 Celsius up to 25 Celsius. So 68 Fahrenheit through to 77 Fahrenheit. It seems like a pretty easy thing to use. My groundwater is pretty warm at the moment, so I've used my glycol chiller to get me down to my pitching temperature, which is 70 Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius. It's now time to pitch the yeast. Now, in terms of pitch rate, this is 11 grams and is intended for five gallon batches. It says on the back here that the pitch rate is between 0.5 and one grams per liter. I'm brewing a three gallon batch or 11 liters, got 11 grams. So this is on the high end, but I'm just gonna put all of this packet into the fermenter. You can rehydrate this yeast in water for 15 minutes ahead of pitching it. Um, but I've also read that you can just put this straight in and that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, hopefully we'll get some alcohol and lactic acid. Hey. Okay, so it's tasting time for the Goza. Sarah, did that bottle make it all the way to California? It did. Made it all in one piece. Well, the two bottles made it each in their own piece. Perfectly. Ooh, very busy. Let's hope my glass is clean. Super light straw color, like completely transparent. Yeah, this is one of the lightest beers I think I have brewed. Let's see if we get anything on the aroma, first of all. You can definitely tell that it has some wildness to it. Oh yeah, what um, what yeast did you end up using? So I used Philly Sour to mm -hmm. create the lacto and the alcohol. Yeah, so it does smell like a little bit like a sour beer. I mean, it smells like a ghost, easily. <laughs> you can totally tell that. It smells like it's going to be lightly tart and just super drinkable. Well, there's only one way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Lightly tart and super drinkable. I would definitely take that. Let's find out. Oh, wow. That's delightful. Well, it is lightly tart. It's not yeah. not overly sour at all, but it is sour. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is like where sours uh, do me well. I like this level of sourness um, and because you know, you get burnt out on that like super like jawbreaker candy sour. And uh, yeah, this is just like almost like a very light lemonade soury kind of thing. All right, well, I think this challenge has, has kind of worked out. Thank you for setting me this challenge, but I don't think we should leave it there. I think I probably need to challenge you back. I am accepting of your challenge. Well, for that, check out the video on Sarah's channel.